Blog Talk Radio. Your journey begins right now. From the west coast of British Columbia to you listening around the world and blasting out into the universe, welcome to tonight's edition of Spaced Out Radio. Call us at 1-607-203-5344. Tweet us at Spaced Out Radio. Find Dave on Facebook at Spaced Out Radio or Skype us at Spaced Out Radio. Now, here's your host, Dave Scott. Good evening and welcome to Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, and we made it to the weekend as you are tuning in to SpacedOutRadio.com as we come in from the frozen Canadian tundra, battle our way past the wild animals, sidestep Bigfoot, and enter Uncle Jimbo's cabin, stoke the fire, heat this place up, and broadcast you live on this Friday night, early Saturday morning if you are on the East Coast. Here at SOR, we do this thing seven days a week. We are your official one-stop shop when it comes to the supernatural, paranormal, conspiratorial, spiritual, eulogical, and so much more. If you're on Twitter, you can follow us at Space Out Radio. On Facebook, you can give our page a like, Space Out Radio Show. And you can also ask to join our private Space Out Radio group as well as our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, you can follow me at Dave Scott SOR, and we are currently... Moving shows over to YouTube for our new channel you can subscribe to, Spaced Out Radio Show. And, of course, our website is spacedoutradio.com. At this time, as we do every night, we love to send a shout-out to those fans participating in the Spaced Out Radio chat room in Paranormal Into the Night, as well as Paranormal Forum. If you go to our website, spacedoutradio.com, you can check out Cat's Corner, Psychic Catherine Fallman will answer one lucky listener submitted question per week. Tonight's show is brought to you by the iPhone app Spirit Story Box. It only costs a buck. Spirit Story Box, the official ghost hunting app of Space Out Radio. The new Agora newspaper spreads around North America, 80,000 readers a month. Check it out. You can click on their banner on our website to read the paper today. Purpleplates.com help heal your body, mind, and soul. Drop into their site and heal yourself today. And Rivulet Reiki and Readings. They provide healings in person or at a distance. Spaced out radio listeners receive a 10% discount on pricing. Tonight, we want to open up your minds. Tonight is about opening up to the fact that all of us, one way or another, are psychic. You may not believe it because you may not have opened up just yet. Or maybe you've blocked it. But if you ask any intuitive person who's truly intuitive, they will tell you, heck, I can tell you that anyone can find this little piece of magic inside of themselves. So how do we know if we are? How do we open up and refine our spiritual ties and abilities? And how does it open up to other worlds and other beings? Patricia Hutchinson is our guest tonight. She's a psychic intuitive who has also had extraterrestrial contact. Patricia has been a metaphysical practitioner for the last 35 years. She has always had an interest in the supernatural since a very young child. She's also trained under James Bond Prague, the world-renowned psychic medium, and has helped people from all over the world. So tonight, Patty will take us into all sorts of connections to find our higher selves and our connection to the aliens above as well. On that note, we bring in Patty Hutchinson. We call her Patricia. Her website is readingsbypatricia.com if you want to check it out. Patricia, thank you so much for joining us on this Friday night. How are you? I'm well, thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you. Now, I'm going to tell everybody, you're a little bit of a rookie here. This is your first time (laughs) doing this on a radio show, so we're going to break the ice right off the bat and just make sure that we get all the nerves and all everything that we're worried about out right off the bat and just relax and have some fun and you know what we we got a very good audience we have a very intelligent audience and i know they will throw some really good questions at you and audience just so you know in the second hour we will take questions not psychic readings but questions with patricia about how to find that inner self if you want to try and reconnect with your own psychic abilities and maybe extraterrestrials. 
Patricia, thank you so much again for joining us tonight. I would love for you to tell our audience, as you said, as I said in the introduction, that you've been really connected to the supernatural since you were a child. When did you first notice that things were a little bit different than what everyone else was seeing? Well, this is a question that many radio stations have asked me, actually. <clears throat> so I'm a rookie to your particular show, but not to the radio, per se. Um, when I was about five years old, actually my earliest memory, so that would be about five, I had a, a situation happen where a very beloved grandmother had passed away. And uh, three days after she passed, she actually appeared to me. It wasn't in a dream, <clears throat> although my mother kept uh, trying to rationalize that it was a dream or an act of fertile imagination. But she did come to me almost in a 3D, but it, it's very difficult to describe because it was in a closet, but all of a sudden it became a road, a road in a kind of a country road. And uh, she appeared and asked me to take care of my father. My father had a heart condition. And um, I, my first reaction was to lunge at her, to want to hug her. And she stopped me in my tracks and said, no, you can't touch me. Um, so I remember kind of feeling, you know, downcast about that. But... It was a very real dream, and although it was sad to see her after, you know, losing her and knowing that I would never see her in the flesh again, it gave me hope. Of course, I told my mother the next day, and she forbade me for, um, from telling anybody else about this because, you know, being in a Catholic home, we weren't allowed to tell people such stories. She just put it down to reading too many fairy tales and uh, too many, uh, you know, stories about things that weren't true. So uh, that was actually the first indicator, I think, and I was very, very young. And then um, another thing happened where I was quite young, and I looked out the window, and it was a beautiful day. And about, I'd say, 10 feet from the window from my bedroom, I saw... A miniature globe of the earth and it was um, it wasn't spinning although it it implied that it was you know on its axis and live very much alive but a miniature earth and to this day I'm not sure what that means but um, all I was getting after when I, I got more mature is um, I'm in the earth but not of the earth if you know what I'm saying uh, maybe I'm seeing life in a different perspective or out of the box, or uh, maybe I'm truly an indigo, uh, whatever. Uh, that was the other incident. And then subsequent to that, um, very weird things would happen, like I would see things and say things, and then they didn't happen, and people would turn around and look at me as if I was odd, and, you know, they would ostracize me because it sounded odd, but things would come to pass, and it scared people, but it scared me because I thought, oh, my God, you know, I'm different. I'm out of the box. So those are just some examples of uh, some of the things that happened in, in the early part of my childhood. But um, having had, you know, psychic grandmothers and coming from at least five to six generations of psychics, it became more apparent to me that this was just a natural process and that, um, you know, this was just part and parcel of being different. So that's pretty yep. much, uh, you know, my rendition of it. Um, I, I don't know if you need anything more than that. But well, I, I love listening to how people got started because I think it's so important in order to try and put together where you are now because everyone has that one experience mm -hmm. that kind of led it to them. But in your case, it was a generation by generation type True. following that you had this ability gifted to you. And then I'm sure as you had children, I don't know if you're a grandparent yet or not. No, not yet. You sound yet. pretty young. 
Well, let's get those kids <laughs> on it if they're old enough. And, you know, but I guess what I'm saying is, did that follow to your children as well, this oh, ability? Oh, definitely. Actually, my oldest daughter is, uh, she, um, she, con- she converses with energies, um, particularly my father, who's long departed. He's been gone for about 15 years now. But um, she's definitely extremely gifted. She hears things. She's very much a clairaudient. I'm a clairvoyant and clairsentient. She's a clairaudient. She hears voices, and they talk to her, and they tell her things, and it's constructive. It's not, uh, you know, a lower energy or anything like that. And I can tell by virtue of of the message, but uh, she's extremely psychic. The middle one is uh, interested in in these things. Uh, The youngest one, I don't think is is evolved uh highly intuitive but not what you would call a psychic or a medium or spiritualist but definitely my oldest daughter is is conversing with um, departed relatives a lot right how did you explain to your children or maybe the teachers at school or friends or parents of friends about the abilities because a lot of people are weirded out by these topics i and let me just give you an example by that patricia Mm -hmm. my daughter my daughter suffers from depression and anxiety she has literally seen spirits since she was about a year and a half old Mm -hmm. and and we've we've never ever uh, when my ex-wife and I were together, or even up till now that she's 17, we've never pushed that away from her that she has that ability. You know, yeah. so one one day I'm I'm chatting because she was having a, a depressive episode in school. I was having a chat with her school counselor, and I I said to her counselor just out of curiosity, and I probably shouldn't have. I said, "Has she ever brought up to you the fact that she's gifted?" And she said, well, gifted how? I said, well, she sees dead people. Mm-hmm. And the counselor is like, well, you know, that could be hallucinogenics, and we, we do should look at getting her on medication for that. I said, no, you're not. I said, that's a that's a family gift that she has. We're not putting her on hallucinogenics. Sometimes you, and I, I told her point blank. I said, sometimes you have to put the textbook away and the drugs away. Because there's more to it than other things. So did you have that type of problem? That oh, well, it, it times that by 100 because, you you know, I was educated by nuns for 13 years. And uh, it's an indictment to mention anything about psychics or, or anything. Matter of fact, um, this is a funny story, but it's <laughs> I'm laughing smugly because I'm, I'm cynical, but... Um, uh, in a hospital, uh, one of the nurses gave me a, a St. Michael uh, defend me prayer, and it says, you know, pray for all those miserable psychics and spiritualists that are ruining the souls of uh, our good people. Uh, you know, they fail to see that Jesus introduced the realm of spirit in the New Testament. I mean, how do you explain the ascension? How do you explain the Pentecost. How do you explain, you know, what he did on uh, with, uh, uh, you know, Elijah seeing Elijah and and the lights with uh, James and uh, John and uh, you know I forget who the third apostle was, but I mean there are so many examples of of how uh, there's an alignment with Christ in the realm of spirit, you know, and even you know, worshipping the whole notion of God as spirit and and truth. And yet, um, you know, in the Catholic faith, it's an indictment to mention anything of that or or say that you are spiritually minded or connected, especially when they know that, you know, oh, you you can converse with deceased relatives, oh, this is just, you know, this is horrendous, this is a mortal sin. So uh, it was not something that, you know, I uh, spoke openly about. Um, my kids, I've never hidden it. I think they were very embarrassed because some of their students and parents heard me on the radio, and, of course, I didn't deny it, and it got back to them. But they're fine with it now. They just accept it as 
the new normal, I guess, right now, because the world is opening up more and more to paranormal uh, truths and realities. So, actually, you know, my kids are okay, but um, with respect to the depression, I've actually read some accounts where, you know, many psychics experience episodes of depression, and it's due to sensitivity. And, I mean, we're sensitive to, to the atmosphere, to the realms, to the fact that there's war, to the suffering, to animals that, you know, are in duress. So, you know, it's part and parcel. We, what we have to do is try to guard ourselves and ground ourselves because, you know, there are a lot of uh, negative energies around, especially now. And with solar flares and, and activities in the, in the planetary realms, you know, these are all realities. So... Um, I hope your daughter has, uh, you know, outgrown the, uh, you know, the depression, but becoming more spiritually inclined and, and aligned will help her a great deal if, if, if that's where she wants to go. Yeah, she's a little unsure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's a little unsure right now with everything, you know, because she's trying to find herself. She's trying to get back on school. She suffers from a high volume of anxiety as well so yeah, being course. a big being in big <clears throat> excuse me being in big crowds and and being around a lot of people especially people her own age is very intimidating for her and mm-hmm. uh you know so we're we're battling that right now but the one thing that she said is dad i just need to put the the spiritual stuff on the side deal with my issues like she is a brilliant old soul so i'm sure. very proud that she's able to take control of that you know well without... i was going to say when you were talking dave i sorry to interrupt you but I felt immediately she was an indigo. She's a very old and evolved soul that has come to be a teacher to you and your your her siblings and your ex-wife, whatever, or current wife, uh, you know, her own um, peers, etc. There's something profound about the way she thinks or perceives the world, and um, you know, she definitely has a higher purpose. But I would, I would, without question, encourage her to focus on her studies and she can always pick up on this if if she's interested at a later time usually old souls are very uh, tuned to animals and you know the nature spirits and you know the realm of fairies etc so they would love to be connected to nature more that's where they get their comfort i don't know if that's the case with your daughter um, Well, that sounds more like my stepdaughter because she literally will have fairies in her room every mm -hmm. night. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that one. She, uh, she, it's amazing. She actually caught one on video. It looks very tiny, but uh, the video is really kind of cool in order to uh, see this uh, little fairy, as we call it, move. So it's kind of fun to watch. Yeah, digital cameras and iPhones can capture orbs and spirit energy. Um, I've seen it. I've seen, you know, emerald green little shafts of shards of light captured and sometimes multiple ones. That's spirit energy. For sure. And I don't I can't remember the pixels or whatever because I'm not really that scientifically inclined, but you can capture that if you go to forests and go near trees and go up to the canyons and riverbeds and vortexes and you'll if you aim your your uh, iPhone or your digital camera in a particular direction that you're drawn to oftentimes you know you'll see the camera will capture lights uh, usually emerald green or or just brilliant little uh, orbs things of that sort Mm-hmm. So let's get to people now, because mm-hmm. realistically, it isn't so much about me or my family. We can discuss that any time, because I have your phone number and I can harass you about that. Oh, no, any but, time. <laughs> <laughs> but let's get to people in general. There's a lot of people out there, and they're listening to this show, or they're walking around the streets, or in the coffee shops, or wherever they are, mm-hmm. that will say, I have no psychic ability. I have no recollection of imaginary friends or speaking with other worlders or anything like that. What do you tell people who are, say, teenage to senior citizen 
about honing in on their own abilities again? Well, you know, psychic abilities uh, we all have. I mean, it, it's in my opinion, of course. I'm not uh, citing anybody in particular, but in, in my opinion, it is a God-given gift. We all are born with it. Um, it's an inner compass. It's that little voice that tells us, uh-uh, don't go there. Uh, just keep to the left, you know, to avoid something calamitous or what have you. We all have and are born with psychic ability. Now, to what degree do we exercise that psychic ability? Uh, and, and we can look at sports and snowboarders and, you know, people who are great swimmers or athletes or triathlon people. What makes them good athletes? Well, they practice more. And they also anatomically are gifted. Well, people like myself, uh, you know, I, I can tell you that I've spent lifetimes doing some, some aspect of this. Uh, you know, I, I could have been a reader. I could have been a healer. I don't know what I was. But I know that for many, many lifetimes, I've done something or I've had some extraordinary experience that's connected me to the spirit world. And this is why I do what I do in this time and place. So it's a combination, Dave, of what you've inherited, uh, your own natural abilities, your own ability to fine-tune, exercise, and hone your skills. But it's also where you've come from, and that is how many past lives that you've delved into this. Because, you know, it could have been lifetimes in some. Well, we're, for some young souls, maybe they didn't have that much experience, but maybe they're attracted to it. I can also tell you from the readings that I've done that I'll come across a very gifted person who is completely shut down. Why? Maybe in a previous life they burned at the stake. Uh, or they were uh, thrown from a high tower with a, a cement um, block on their neck and drowned. They might have had some traumatic experience. They might have been, you know, like Joan of Arc set fire to or whatever. I mean, sometimes trauma will stymie a natural ability due to fear from that incarnation. So there are lots of things that come into play. It's not just simply, well, you know, it's we're, we all have it and we just have to use it more. Uh, there are many facets to it. It's, it's multi-tiered, multifaceted, and uh, it's trying to peel off the layers and understand it and go with it. If you have that natural ability, try to fine-tune because what it does is, you know, it helps us connect to the higher realms which are essentially there to guide us and assist us. We are talking with Patricia Hutchinson tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Readings by Patricia is her website. As we enclose on the first hour, we got about four minutes left before we have to go to break, Patricia. And I want to get into this so much more because I think this is so important as we try to redevelop people's own psychic abilities. Now, what about the person who is agnostic or so atheist or so five senses that they have to be skeptical on absolutely everything? They have well, to shoot down everything that you are saying in regards to reconnecting with one's spiritual self. You know, Dave, <clears throat> I love skeptics. Um, the past, I'd say, two or three years, I've had girls gift their fathers a psychic reading or spiritual reading. And, uh, you know, the fellow comes and he's, you can see he's totally blocked. He sits down and I'll do the reading and I'll ask, well, is there any feedback? And uh, he'll say, no, no, no. And then after something gels or something opens up or whatever happens, and I get this glorious letter that says, uh, you know, you've hit on these targets, and how could you have done it? It's not me. I'm just a conduit. It's my connection. I happen to be plugged in. And um, it's the skeptics that come back and then refer me that are so gratifying because here they, you know, they're hard science. This is hard science too, 
but they're hard scientists. I don't believe in this crop. And all, and all of a sudden, their mother comes in and starts telling them different things or points out what they feel that they want them to do. And you can see a change, a shift. So I welcome skeptics. I really do. I, I like them too. That... I like the debate, but I get frustrated with their whole five senses attitude, and they're willing to believe any post that totally sides with their feelings instead of looking at the all-round picture. Yes, yeah, I agree. I agree. But, you know, when people ask me, you know, what should I do? Should I prepare for this reading? What do you want me to bring? Do you want me to bring an artifact or uh, an object or a photo or anything? I always say an open mind, because if they have an open mind, I can do my job much better, with much more clarity. It's when you're blocked by fear and, uh uh-oh, is she going to start telling me nasty things? That's what becomes the barrier in the reading. So if as long as a person is open and trusts, that's all I ask them to do. We are talking with Patricia Hutchinson tonight on Spaced Out Radio, going from psychic to ET contact. How do we make contact with our higher spiritual selves is the topic du jour. We are going to hop out for our first break of the night as we are going to get more into learning your own psychic ability if you feel you've lost it. Great guest tonight. Patricia is so knowledgeable. We're li- you're listening to Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. We'll be right back after this break. This is Patrick Webster Small, and I'm going to bring you the Webster Phenomena right here on Spaced Out Radio, Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Every week, I'm going to bring you the freshest information on the globe. I'm bringing you guys the truth, extraterrestrials in the sky, prophecy, chemtrails, rainbow spot, the seventh angel, biblical skies, ancient gods, ghosts, spirits, see it, hear it. So let's do this every Monday night. I'll see you back here. At 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the place have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Did you know that Spaced Out Radio is live seven days a week? This is Jim Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekend. You can listen to my show, Spaced Out Weekend, every Saturday and Sunday night starting at 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific. On Spaced Out Weekend, we like to delve into the paranormal, even the newest technologies that have enhanced modern-day ghost hunting. And sometimes, we'll get a little creative and dabble into the crypto world, UFOs, and much, much more. So tune in at www.spacedoutradio.com on the weekends and listen to me, Jim Tyson, on Spaced Out Weekend. Hi there, this is Jolene with Rivula Reiki and Reading, and I want you to relax. Let me help you chill out and get in touch with your body, mind, and soul. In this busy world, sometimes we need to let go, and this is where I can help. Visit my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr, or my Facebook page, rivuletrnr, to set up an appointment for relaxation, Reiki, or readings, no matter where you are. Spaced Out Radio listeners will also receive 10% off their first visit. It's time for you to make time for you. The Spaced Out Radio Network can be found at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is Dave Scott. Here you can join the latest on our weekly shows and news from around the world involving UFOs, cover-ups, cryptids, ghosts, and more. 
read articles from our very talented staff, and check out our weekly tarot card reading from psychic Catherine. You can also sign up for free on our forum and tell us about your experiences. SpacedOutRadio.com. Always live, always interactive. Ready to find out what's flying up in the sky? Me too. Hi there, this is Rich Giordano. Please join me every Sunday night at 7 for the AZ UFO Show. It's a fast and compelling two-hour show on UFOs, extraterrestrials, conspiracy theories, and much more. Every week we will have great guests and great topics to try and answer the ultimate question, are we alone in this universe or not? So tune in to the AZ UFO Show with me, Rich Giordano, right here on the Spaced Out Radio Network at spacedoutradio.com. Would you like to connect with Dave and his guests? Learn more at spacedoutradio.com for the latest news, features, photos, and articles. Spacedoutradio.com is where you can stay up to date on what's happening around the world and up in the stars. And now, back to Dave Scott. Welcome back to Space Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for joining us. Packed house in the Space Out Radio chat room, Paranormal End of the Night, and Paranormal Forum for joining us tonight. Always beautiful to have you guys along for the ride. Really appreciate it. Hey, I'm wandering off into the wilderness for the next couple of days. Uncle Jimbo James Tyson will be in the hot seat here in the cabin for Spaced Out Weekend tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Spaced Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. You can also ask to join our private Spaced Out Radio group as well as our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott S O R, and of course, we now have a YouTube channel where we're downloading episodes in there. Apparently, a few of those got kicked because there was a couple of bad words that were used during the broadcast. YouTube apparently doesn't like that, so we're having to reinstall them. But nonetheless, we have a YouTube channel now, and of course, we are moving to Spreaker very, very soon. Hopefully, within the next two weeks. We're almost ready for test shows on Spreaker just to make sure that we know what the hell we're doing on this end of the microphone. So, yeah, that's what it's all about. Tonight, we are talking psychic ability. If you've lost it, how can you refind it? And can you use it to contact extraterrestrials? We are talking with Patricia Hutchinson tonight. Her website is readingsbypatricia.com if you want to check it out. She also does phone readings as well. Patricia, thank you so much for joining us on hour number one as we got one half hour left here on on the first hour of this show. I do want to remind our listeners that in hour number two, we will be taking your questions, not for psychic readings. This is not a psychic reading show, but how you can improve yourself and your own abilities or refine your own abilities to find out what is truly out there for yourself. Patricia, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Dave. I have a question, and I'm going to start this from one of our listeners, Eugene, who is following us on Facebook tonight. Sure. He he is asking, are previous lives genetic and the memories that come with that from forefathers? That's a good question, and what I'm sensing here from the guides is yes. <clears throat> yes. Genetic meaning that, in my view, I don't know, correct me if, if you think I'm off off the rails a bit, but um, we pick our parents, and oftentimes our siblings, our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, uncles, even the unsavory types, we've known perhaps thousands of years ago in other lifetimes, and we've picked them to be teachers in some ways, to help us learn lessons, to help us evolve, etc. So the answer to Eugene's question, I believe, is yes. Perfect. It's nice and simple sometimes, isn't it? In order to try and figure out what is truly going on and what is the connection between what our past was 
our past lives and the family that surrounds it. I was once told that my daughter, who is now having the troubles, that her and I have been together on multiple lives together because we are so close. And the one of the previous lives actually had me. She was a like a princess or someone in royalty. Oh, doggy. Uh, yeah, we sorry had about a, that. Oh, no worries. Uh, she was a, a princess or some sort of royalty back in the 1700s, 1800s, and I was like a knight that was assigned to guard her. And I actually died doing that in battle. And so I've always had this protective realm around her, no matter how many lives we have had together. So it's interesting how it all ties together with the forefathers and previous lives and who we choose as our parents. That totally resonates because remember, before we incarnate, we write our contracts. And the wise beings, the Council of Light, that help us and assist us in writing our contract to perform whatever mission we're here to do, we sign off. We ask them, okay, this is what we're going to do, but can we have so-and-so in our lives? Because I want to maintain that closeness. Um, You know, I don't want to digress too much, but I I had a few readings um, in the past year where I had two brothers that were unbelievably protective of each other. And when I was doing past lives with them, I saw them as soldiers, not just in the First World War, but in the Second World War, in Korea, in Vietnam, and the Desert Storm. And um, the mother later told me that um, the two of them are very much that way, that, um, you know, can't understand it, how brothers can be so close, so protective of each other. But what happens is they may not have been biological brothers in the war they could have been just brothers in arms and perhaps you know as brothers in arms are soldiers often you know look at each other and say look you have my back if i'm in trouble and so when we come in or reintegrate into the earth dimension or into the material 3d we ask that we have that particular individual so that we can protect them and watch over them and share love with them, etc. So that makes sense. What you just said about um, your experience, you know, right? Where you were told right. that you and your daughter, you know, spent lifetimes, and you were perhaps, you know, the first night she was a princess, and you made sure that she was, you know, her safety was being protected at all times. So that totally resonates. <clears throat> We are talking with Patricia Hudson tonight on Space Out Radio, her website, readingsbypatricia.com, if you want to check her out. So let's go back to today. Mm-hmm. Okay, we've already touched on, you know, there are people listening to this show that, that do not realize that they still have that intuitive abilities. How long does it take to reconnect with your spiritual self? Well, it really doesn't take all that long because <clears throat> if you know anything about the spiritual laws there is a law of intent if your intention is to do that you can manifest that you can make it happen so all you have to do is the intention for example i want say you want to lose 50 pounds well what's your intention are you going to go to mcdonald's heck no because you want to lose this weight unless you you plan on running marathons to lose it so you set a plan and in um Connecting, you know, we we ask that prayer is introduced. And what is prayer? It's thought that um, invokes the light and the higher realms to help us connect to our higher beings, our higher minds, uh, to call in the divine presence to help assist us. Uh, Every person that incarnates into the earth by choice, you know, can call on angels and, and wise beings, spirit guides, light workers, what have you. Now, there are some that don't want angels, um, and they'll call on the dark side. What can we do? Nothing, because they're exercising their own free will. And maybe the soul has to go through, you know, the valley of darkness before it can come to the light. All you have to do is set the intention. 
I want to connect with my higher mind. How do you do it? Okay, think about a deceased relative that you were very close to and help that, ask that individual to assist you in this. Ask for help. Uh, but Patricia, yeah, I understand that. But a lot of people today, though, and I am one of them, and I know mm-hmm. many people like me, where our minds are continually running. Even when we're sleeping, our minds are still flowing with energy, thro- flowing with thoughts, because we've turned into such a 24-hour world. How do people then shut their minds down when they can't even find five minutes in their day to meditate or try and look inside themselves? You know, I have that problem. People think that I, you know, it's easy for me to meditate. No, as soon as I start, I hear somebody's car motor going or the their alarms going on the car or, you know, a, an ambulance going up the street. The ability to tune out is not easy. It, it requires practice. Again, this goes back to athletes. You can't just get on a a snowboard and decide to go off uh, Whistler. You have to have the skills. Now, you know, YouTube has a whole bunch of ways of, you know, teaching people how to connect and how to meditate. Usually what happens is that if you can download something where you can connect your breathing and uh, your, you know, usually it's deep diaphragmatic breathing, Close your eyes by screening out, you know, things of the world. And try to focus on a pleasant scene. You know, it could be, you know, a shore of Maui or, you know, you don't have to go there. You can just get a picture and just formulate a a favorite serene picture. Uh, You have to, obviously, you've got to be in a relaxed state. But, you know, there are ways and means of getting into a relaxed state. You have to learn how to. But uh, generally, what's taught in Ayurvedic, um, uh, you know, beliefs is that you have to learn how to relax, put yourself in a meditative state by trying to shut off the world around us, which is not easy. It's no mean feat, but it can be done. And all it is is you and your breath, your breathing. And sometimes put your right hand on your diaphragm and just focus on that, in and out, and two words, in and out. And then, um, you know, you can focus on even going to different worlds, you know, as as part of your meditation. But there's, there's a big de- tons of material yeah. on it. There's a big debate happening right now in the Space Out Radio chat room regarding where karma comes into play with all of this, from past lives right through to your current incarnation. Yes, well, karma is is uh, certainly a cosmic law. It's the law of cause and effect. And uh, you know, we start from a pen prick and we we evolve, just like every living organism. Um, karma, essentially, for us, because it's difficult when you have freedom to choose, is um, making the best possible choice. Now. Lots of times failure is the way we learn. Is that part of karma? Yes, it is. Um, Karma is the sum total of all actions that have ever been committed by us. So uh, it's it's not always that easy to, in a soundbite to describe it, but um, I guess what's coming to mind is do good and expect good, do evil and expect evil, Uh, I don't know if that makes any sense, but we are what our karma is. Our kids Mm -hmm. are often our karma. Our parents are our karma. It's all part of the whole. I don't know if that answers No, it... Yes, for sure. Getting back to what we said right before I made that comment about what was happening in the Space Out Radio chat room, Mm -hmm. for the people out there who cannot turn their minds off, like you and me, Mm Mm-hmm. For a lot of these people, doing it on their own is very tough. Would you recommend then that people seek out a teacher or an energy healer like I did uh, with a fantastic friend of mine named Pascal to help them open up so they can help control that emotion and what they're going to go through? Oh, definitely. Um, Matter of fact, I'd say 99.9% of the psychologists and counselors out there 
life coaches do that. They refer people to some circles, and, uh, you know, spiritualist churches have them. Um, uh, You could get CDs or, uh, you know, download material or use get books. I know James Von Prague has many books on on this very topic, as others do, uh, Brian Weiss and Sylvia Brown's got a book of meditation. If you feel that you need more hands-on, yes, you know, um, going into like an open development circle, people that do yoga seem to access a lot of that. A lot of the boards have, you know, descriptions of circles that are out there. Uh, There's closed circles, there's open circles. And, um, you know, whoever has the intention can join the circle and learn the techniques um, of meditation. I know there are Buddhist temples that um, often have these things, or uh, some of the Sikh temples do as well. But um, I'm sure, you know, these newspapers like Common Ground and um, different things like that have lots of ads for people who are looking. I think Craigslist, too, is another another um, uh, way to go where you could put it out there and see what's available. But, you know, I, we were talking about YouTube. YouTube is another um, avenue that a person could pursue to see, you know, what happens in circles. And my, my fear is that sometimes um, it's finding the right leader and also trusting because in these circles you know it's not just meditating when after you meditate for 10 or 15 minutes you have to open up and discuss your journey and some people don't really want to do that because they feel at risk or they feel you know they're vulnerable people and maybe they're not ready to and i don't know it depends on the leader maybe the leader will say well you know we'll pass and go on to the next person but um it certainly is a way of of uh, honing your psychic abilities and helping you become a lot more intuitive and plugged in, Mm -hmm. I would say. And your experience was positive. Absolutely it was. So, you know, perhaps by word of mouth, somebody might know of somebody or, you know, they could, you know, have to source it out, I guess. I have a question from Claudia in Paranormal Into the Night. She Mm -hmm. says, at night when she closes her eyes, not asleep, she can see people inside a house laughing, talking, and she does not know who they are, but it's crystal clear. She's not asking to see this. It's just shown. Mm -hmm. What would that be? Oh, well, pardon me. Her her question is: She is not asking to see this at all. It just happens. What and why does this happen? Well, what she should do is she should connect with her spirit guides and ask why that is being shown. What message is there there? Uh, does she have a happy home where people where laughter abounds, or you know that it's joyful? What's the message in it? Why is she seeing that? If it's repetitive, what is the message what do they want to show her what's there to be learned and if she does not want to see that image she can command it to go to leave Mm -hmm. but i would suggest you know that she should get into some sort of practice where she can connect with with her energies and her um, light workers around her to help you know if it's disturbing you know she might want to ask them to help her Um, you know, dissipate that or ask that image to leave. And if she feels that it's good or there's some comfort in it, she can, you know, tell them, yeah, well, what is is it that you want me to learn from this? But she should Mm -hmm. ask the question. Does she say that it's uncomfortable or she doesn't understand? She thinks she just doesn't understand. She says it doesn't scare her, but it feels very natural. And, you know, one time she says she closed her eyes and she saw lots of monks, but just their faces, and they kept coming up to say hello. Well, those could be energies that just want to assure her that they're, you know, assisting her on her path, on her journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, perhaps, you know, because, you know, they're 
people of prayer. I, I don't feel that that's a bad image at all. Uh, she should thank them and ask them, is there something that you want to tell me? Is there something that you want me to know? Dino in Paranormal Into the Night is wondering, because he is having dreams that are so lucid and real that he has gone for years or that he's had trouble sleeping for years because of it. How does lucid dreaming play into the psychic phenomena, if at all? Well, you know, the problem with lucid dreaming is that it keeps us up at night and it um, what happens is that it can rob us of, of uh, you know, the realms that we need to function the next day. So, I'm not really a dream expert, but um, all I can say is, is it a comfortable feeling or an uncomfortable feeling? If it's uncomfortable and you don't want it to plague you, you don't want to be bothered with it, that's when you have to call on your guides to take it away. It's like a movie. You're watching it. It doesn't make you feel good. You get up and leave. Uh, He can take control because he is in control of his thoughts. And also... uh, He needs to assert his control. If he doesn't want to see this, he can say, no, it's gone, done. Uh, Some people clap their hands and say, delete, cancel, you know, um, clear. And and that's the signal for it to go. Or, uh, you know, switch it and think of a, a nice serene image where it's putting you to sleep so that you can get the your restorative um, realms, because that's what you need in order to function. I don't we know if that talking, really fully in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that works well for me. But we we're are in talk- control, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. At least we're we're, in I control. like to think I am. What about, right. people who, what about people who hear voices? Because well, a lot of people will take the fact that if they're hearing different people's voices in their head, that they've got a mental problem, but that isn't always the case. That's right. Rosemary Altia, you know, in her books, uh, she's a British psychic. She mentioned that as a young child, hearing these voices that would wake her up and keep her up all night long. And and these uh, some of them were ghoulish-looking images of, of spirits that would come right up to her nose and call her name. And it was really spooky. It freaked her right out until she learned that I'm in control here and if I don't want to see these images you know because they're making me fearful I need to assert myself and tell them it is time for you to go and you can do that at will you just have to command them to leave and you know uh, again replace that with peace and calm or call on you know the ascended masters michael the archangel ask for spirit guides to defend you um you know these voices to cease and desist but you have to get assertive you know you you say i i don't accept it i don't i'm not receiving it i don't i no longer hear you the thing is you have to be firm and, you know, you could have him try that and see if that works. But it isn't insanity or anything like that. I think it's quite normal. It's uh, we have to assert ourselves because we have free will. We're in control. We're driving I, this car. Yeah. I was just going to ask you where free will comes into play about this. So if you could go into the free will portion, I would greatly appreciate that in regards to learning your psychic ability. Sure. Well, you know, I have freedom to explore my psychic ability or nah, I don't I don't feel that it's a priority. I think I'll I'll leave it. I have other things to do. Maybe I'm not as evolved and I I can't quite, you know, fathom it. It's not the right time uh, for whatever reasons. However, on the, you know, conversely, on the opposite side, if you feel, yes, this is the route I want to go, the time is right, and I'm ready for it, and I'm going to do it. You know, this is what free will is, is we're, we're making choices constantly. And if we want to explore our psychic abilities, you know, there are ways and means of doing it. We've discussed some of the ways 
but you have to get busy. You've got to do your homework. You, the first thing is the internet. You can start exploring. They've got a whole, you know, plethora of books and titles and CDs forever. Dr. Wayne Dyer has so many books out, and Marianne Williamson. All these conferences that they have, like Yes, I Can, and uh, these things that were in Vancouver were, you know, um, great authors uh, of this very thing, uh, you know, speak in depth. Their books cover a lot of topics. But, you know, I would suggest anybody that wants to peruse or to pursue to go through those methods first and see what's out there. Banyan Books has quite a few books about this very thing. And, you know, find a book that resonates. If you can't afford it, go to the library. The library has tons of things. A lot of spiritualist, spiritualist churches have libraries where you can borrow books and, you know, just return them within a certain day, and, you know, you can explore things. But um, there are, you know, a number of spiritualist churches that people can go to, and if they resonate, they can learn quite a bit. They have classes there all the time. We are talking with Patricia Hutchinson tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Her website, readingsbypatricia.com, if you want to check it out or get a reading yourself. When people are starting to get into the know, and this will be my final question before our break here at the top of the hour, and they are starting to have what a lot of people call a download. A lot of people get scared because it can feel like a heart attack. It can feel like a a drug-induced rush. How would you describe when that happens, when you really start to clearly open up? Well, I can tell you about my own experience with downloads, and it can be you think you're having a stroke because uh, they occurred at night just before I was nodding off, and my my head... I guess it would be the crown chakra area would be the best way to describe it, the top of the head. I would feel like little tiny acupuncture needles were penetrating my skull every single solitary night. It wasn't an unpleasant feeling. It was the only way that I can describe it is similar to acupuncture, where you know it's doing some good, but you're being very still and very attentive. And that's what was going on night after night after night after night. And I was asking, what is going on? And I knew intuitively, because I picked up a book 2012, um, the Clarion something, maybe the Clarion Call, I can't remember the uh, author's name. And fortunately for me, I read something about after 2012, there would be some serious downloading from the spirit realms to people that had a specific mission to perform and you know they would they could feel tingling or dizziness or sleeplessness you know insomnia you know aches and pains fever night sweats all those things and funnily enough all those symptoms i had and so you know i could neatly kind of rationalize them well i guess i'm being downloaded what is the downloading i think it's the opening up of the of the um consciousness or broadening it you know expanding it if we only use 10 percent of our minds uh what's going on with the other 90 percent you know maybe the downloading is increasing at 50 percent so that we can open up and become a lot more aware intuitive um plugged in insightful whatever you want to use so I didn't fight the downloading. I can understand somebody's fear of it because I think it is, it, it's a force to be reckoned with is the best way I can describe it. What I would do is I would just allow, just allow, because it's for the highest, truest, and best. It's for the greater good. That I can tell you. It's for the greater good. So maybe not being fearful, but being more open to receive whatever good is coming through. Indeed. 
We are talking with Patricia Hutchinson tonight on Space Out Radio. We are up against our break at the top of the hour. We are going to learn more about that connection and how to connect with extraterrestrials and your phone calls in hour number two. one six zero seven two zero three five three four four is the call in number. Once you're in, press one and we will try and get to your question live on the air. You're listening to Space Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. We'll be right back after this break. The Phoenix Lights, Roswell, secret military aircraft, flying saucers. Let's check out the sky together. Hi, this is Rich Giordano, host of the AZ UFO Show right here on the Space Out Radio Network. Every Sunday night at 7, we hit the airwaves to talk about the phenomenon of unidentified flying objects and more. We want to hear your stories. Maybe you've seen what many others have seen. Only one way to find out, the AZ UFO Show on Sunday nights on the Spaced Out Radio Network on spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is James Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekends, and I know you're enjoying tonight's show with Dave Scott on Spaced Out Radio. I just wanted to remind you that Spaced Out Radio continues on the weekends with me. On Spaced Out Weekend, we hit the airwaves at www.spacedoutradio.com starting at 10 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern. We have great guests with interesting chats regarding all things paranormal, supernatural, cryptozoological, and much, much more. So tune in to Spaced Out Weekend and give us a listen. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the place have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit and Expect a miracle. Need a break but don't have the time? Tired of life's running around? Hi, this is Jolene from Rivulet Relaxation and Readings. Let me help you in your time of need. From Reiki to Realm Readings, I can help provide you therapy for your mind, body, and soul. Check out my website at rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivuletrnr. And if you're a listener of Spaced Out Radio, receive 10% off your first session. Rivulet Relaxation and Readings. And don't forget to give my Facebook page a like. It's time for you to make some important time for you. The Spaced Out Radio Network can be found at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there, this is Dave Scott. Here you can join the latest on our weekly shows and news from around the world involving UFOs, cover-ups, cryptids, ghosts, and more. Read articles from our very talented staff and check out our weekly tarot card reading from psychic Catherine. You can also sign up for free on our forum and tell us about your experiences. SpacedOutRadio.com. Always live, always interactive. The Webster Phenomena airs on Spaced Out Radio on Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. I'm your host, Patrick Webster Small, and I discovered extraterrestrials in the atmosphere, which led me to more discoveries developing the Webster Phenomena, which is the occurrence of extraterrestrials throughout nature. I will explain the Webster Phenomena and all my recent discoveries every Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time, right here on Spaced Out Radio. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Want to call in to Space Style Radio? You can. 1-607-203-5344. You can tweet us at Space Style Radio or send us a message on Facebook at Space Style Radio. And now, back to the show, here's Dave Scott. Welcome back to hour number two on Space Out Radio tonight. Thanks for tuning in. So excited. Pitchers and catchers reporting for spring training and baseball. Yankees are going to look good this year. Beat the hell out of those New York Mets that Joey Giggles 
likes to cheer for, they're not going back to the World Series. The Yankees are in the American League. That's what I'm stating right now, even though I probably will be wrong with our pitching staff. But that's okay. We're not talking baseball tonight. We're talking psychic ability, how it can tie into extraterrestrials with our guest, Patricia Hutchinson. Tonight, her website, Readings by Patricia. We'll get her on in moments. I do want to remind you that Uncle Jimbo James Tyson is in the hot seat in the cabin here for the next two nights. So all of you space travelers out there will have to tune in to Spaced Out Weekend to hear what he's got planned. I personally will be wandering off into the wilderness, as I like to do. Find myself. Grab some chi with nature. Love it. Hey, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Space Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Space Out Radio Show. You can ask to join our Spaced Out Radio group, as well as our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, you can follow me at Dave Scott, S-O-R. And, of course, our new YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show. You can subscribe to that. And now we bring in Patricia Hutchinson once again into Space Out Radio for hour number two. Her website, readingsbypatricia.com. Patricia, one of the key elements that I wanted to discuss with you tonight was when people are reconnected with their spiritual gifts they have. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who are psychic or intuitive start having extraterrestrial connections. What brings this upon us? Well, <clears throat> when you're spiritually centered, uh, you're a lot more plugged in, you're a lot more open and vulnerable to this because, remember, you're connecting to a different dimension when you're calling on higher beings. The wise beings, they're in a different time and space. They're in the astral plane. <clears throat> they exist. They vibrate in a different frequency. They're in a different field. So, you know, it, it's pretty, I would say that you would be more of a sitting duck for uh, an encounter with a space traveler when you're connected. I know um, reading different books about uh, Lob Sang Rampa's book, for example, where he meditated for years and he was blind and existed on a mountain in Tibet. And he had, um, you know, an ET connection whereby... The, the extraterrestrials actually hooked, uh, connected his um, uh, what do you, his orbital sockets to some mechanism to allow him to see when he was in the spacecraft. <coughs> Pardon me. And um, for that particular time that he was with the ETs, he could see. He was sighted, but when he went back to the mountain, he, he was blind. So um, perhaps because you you know you're so um, acclimated to to communicating on a different wavelength, it makes you more vulnerable to that type of thing. I shouldn't say vulnerable because that kind of intimates a negative. It's not. It doesn't have to be a negative. It can be exceedingly positive. But uh, you certainly do have to be protected and guarded and gu- and grounded at all times. I mean, otherwise. You don't know where, you know, they can take you. But I think the bottom line is um, when you are more psychically inclined, you know, there is more likelihood to have, uh, you know, Mm easy communications. Again, you you know, this is... mm -hmm. Go ahead, sorry. No, again, this is a free will thing, too, because uh, do you want that experience? Do you not want that experience? You can you can command that. I mean, you don't have to be, you know, a victim. You can mm. be very firm in saying, no, not now, I'm not ready. Or you can mm-hmm. say, this is the time. When you have those extraterrestrial connections, and most people are not prepared for it. I know when I met my first extraterrestrial, I was not prepared for it at all. It literally... It, it made me scatterbrained because I knew what I was looking at. I had someone who was experienced beside me, but in the end, I always I describe it this way. I always felt like a, a little child holding on to a piece of paper with every rule in my life that I've been taught, and then some stranger ripping it out of my hand, crumpling up that piece of paper and throwing it in the garbage. That's yeah, the way it felt right. to me. 
How do people prepare for that? You don't. I think that's what makes it so unique. You don't. Uh, Going back to my first experience, two travelers came into the bedroom, and it was where I where I did my meditation and prayer. And um, they, they were attracted by the light. I, I can't say they were particularly good. I didn't particularly get a good feeling about them, but they just happened to be popping in. And maybe, perhaps they were curious, but uh, I was very fearful. And it, it was something that I didn't really want. And I remember calling on, you know, my guides to get rid of them because I wasn't ready for it. Um, so I don't think you can be that prepared. I don't. All the accounts that I've read, I don't think a lot of people, abductees and that, were prepared. And a lot of them didn't ask for it. Um, Whitney Stryber's book, he certainly, that's the last thing that he wanted is to be abducted and to go into some far-off galaxy. Uh, Barney and Betty Hill, certainly, you know, the missing hours, they didn't want, I mean, they were scared to death. And I think uh, he committed suicide at the end of, uh, or I, I can't remember how old he was, but he couldn't live with himself. So, you know, it, it, we're not prepared, that's the thing. Right. Let's go to the phone lines here as we have some calls piling up. We're going to go to Adriana first on Space Out Radio tonight. Adriana, welcome to Space Out Radio. And you have a question for Patricia. Hi, yes. Um, Thank you. I just wanted to know if I am a light worker or have some medium mediumship um, um, ability. Because I've been having some... um, kind of pressure over my forehead. Um, what I'm what I'm sensing with you is that you are a healer and okay. you could do very, very well taking some Reiki courses and doing some therapeutic touch. <clears throat> you can start with animals. And, you know, once your confidence gets up, you can, you know, use your abilities on on people that might have headaches or, you know, everybody has aches and pains. You can start there. You can also Mm -hmm. take healing courses if if you're persuaded to do that. But I I sense with you some some facet of healing. And I don't know if that resonates with you, but I, I feel that, you know, you come by it honestly. Yeah, and I've, I've been having that with some people that sometimes I talk to them and they say, oh, you know, this is something that I, you know, especially you tell me something, you know, like it's something that they wanted to hear from me, like in a, com- like in a conversation or sometimes I, I I have feelings about other people. I don't know if I'm an, em- in like an empath. Uh, you, yes, well, healers have to be empaths. They have to be empathetic because you're feeling somebody's pain and you're directed to go to that area of the body to relieve it. So, you know, you have to have compassion. You have to be empath- you know, empathic in order to be an effective healer. But I feel that uh, you have a natural ability to heal, and it's something that you need to uh, develop. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. being intuitive, you would go to a certain part of the body. You would be directed almost to go to a certain area to relieve that person's pain. But what you have to do is you have to, you know, have confidence and try it on your friends or your siblings or your boyfriend or, you know, your girlfriend, whoever, and see yeah. if they <laughs> feel, you know, tingling or, gee, I feel better or, you know, all of a sudden I feel lighter, I feel that I, I don't have this pain, um, you know, or they might feel nothing. And then don't be discouraged because, you know, when you first start out, you're afraid. You don't want to disappoint. But, you know, with anything, it comes with time and practice and dedication and intention. Yes. Did I mm-hmm. answer your question? Yes, yes, you did. Oh, okay, then. Adriana, thank you so much for calling in tonight. I really appreciate you listening in. Thank you. 
All right. We're going to go to Alan, who has a question about connecting with extraterrestrials next. Alan, thank you so much for holding. I know you've been holding for a while. How are you doing? Doing great. Doing great. You're on with Patricia. What's your question? Hi, Patricia. Yeah, my, my question is uh, the contact with the aliens. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I've tried myself just to send out, you know, through my thoughts and that to connect. And I also have a couple of things um, that I had for apps from, like, Stephen Greer who kind of tells you or shows you how that you can okay. contact with them, but right. nothing has never worked. Mm-hmm. I mean, I believe, I, I do believe we're not the only ones around. Sure. Have you had any, have you seen anything in the sky? Have you had any experience in dreams? Has anything out of the ordinary occurred at all in the last little while? No, no, not not at all. I mean, then, I'm I'm in astronomy. I love the the look at the stars and yeah, right, and at the planets. But nothing's mm. never, never never come about, you know. Well, what I'm sensing with you is um, keep up your interest, and if you have a telescope or if you'd like to get a telescope, you might even get a used one. You know, keep your interest up, because what you're doing is you're telling the universe, I'm interested. Um, And if there is contact, I am available, provided that it's of the highest good. Right. Right. Well, I do have a telescope. I belong to an astronomy club. Okay. And, and, you know, we always go out, you know, at at our dark site. And, Mm -hmm. you know, because we love the, you know, universe and... Exactly, and the night sky. I mean, it's oh, it's just uh, teeming with life. Yeah, what I would do is I, you know, sometimes these things don't just happen. You know, it takes time, and uh, you know, you you might need to plow the field a little bit more before anything happens like that. I mean, not everybody has, you know, contact. I think few and far between as far as I know, have unusual experiences with ETs. Um, I know that uh, when I took, um, you know, like a a seminar with James von Prague, he had not had any contact with any ETs, and he's exceedingly, you know, psychic and intuitive. And uh, he told me that he went to a... um, he went to a place in Arizona that had quite a few lights. And, uh, I mean, it's not just it, it happened once in a blue moon, but this thing was like every single night these lights would appear. And he was with a group of people that were like-minded, and they did a meditation, and they put their thoughts together and started to just put it out there that, you know, we're not afraid of you, you know, we're all connected, and if we can be of any help to you, we are open to receive. And right. he said he said that um, one night, it only happened once of the eight days, that he actually got a hit. And it was the Pleiadians. And uh, they came and said, we are curious. And this is why we're coming around so much. And he said, what are you curious about? And he said, your emotions. They tell me that you you love each other, what does that mean? And he sent out the thought for him that, you know, when you care and, you know, you're concerned, your emotions are stirred. And they said, we have no emotions. And he said that the experience enabled him to sort of understand that we're not all the same, and maybe they're from a different plane of being where emotions don't come into it. Maybe it's all intellect, maybe it's all you know, about going to the next star, the next, uh, you know, that happens to be a thousand light years away or whatever. But that was his only experience, and he is an exceedingly psychic man. He's, you know, very gifted, and that was it for him. So I don't know how and why they pick and choose, but um, they do. But I, I, I think that more often than not, 
encounters and uh, abductions are very, very rare. Well, I'm not saying I wanted to be abducted or anything. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what I'm saying is I even tried the psychic and the, in, and the intuitive part. You know, when when you, you try and you do what the books tell you to do, and like you said about the uh, the group thing, that that's mentioned in Greer's book also okay. about meditation and everything like that. Mm-hmm. But when you do a little, you know, try everything and you never get anything. You know, it's just well, don't um, don't be discouraged because you're still very young, and you've got a long way to go. There's a lot to explore and a lot to experience. So who knows what's around the corner? I would say keep at it. You know, I look at uh, skateboarders and people that ice skate, and I'm thinking, man, you know, what does it take? Huh, practice, time, years. Right. Intense. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. I mean, you got to get out there. I can't just do it in a book. You know, oh, and, oh, right, right, right. And so what I would suggest to you is live your life, you know, and with the intention of, hey, I'm really interested in astrology and, uh, or astronomy, pardon me, and, uh, I've you know, been doing it for years. I'm not really young. I'm in mm-hmm. my 50s, so. Well, you've got a long way to go yet. Absolutely. So, you know, you, you do, I you've got so. <laughs> worlds to explore and galaxies to go and all sorts of things. So just keep your open mind and, uh, you know, just put it out there that, hey, you know, if, if um, you know, it comes, it comes, and if it doesn't, I'm going to read all about these abductees and all about their interesting experiences and what these ETs have, what message they have for us, what they want from us, what they're here to do, you know. Just keep your interest up, because that's what I did. I just, I read as much... I mean, I couldn't get enough reading in when I was, uh, you know, in my, well, I'd say teenage and then 20s and 30s, and I was always, um, you know, tuning into UFO programs and trying to read fate magazines about encounters and taking out books. So keep your interest there, and it will evolve and develop over time. Oh, they'll they'll always be there because I'm Mm -hmm. not one to close my mind. No. Awesome. I suggest Al- to everyone else never close your mind. No, 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 absolutely. Al- Alan, thank you so much for tuning in tonight okay, and coming great. on the air with us. We appreciate that very much. All right. I got a question for you because this is going to take us to our final break. We only got about three minutes before we got to go to break here. And then okay. I have a few more callers that want to get in on you, so we're going to move them along quick. Okay. All right. My question for you is this. When you're connecting with ETs, how important is it for people to realize? Because a lot of people will say, you know what, I I, I just want to see them. I want to see them. But how much is it that you have to be careful what you wish for? Exactly. Very careful. The first uh, time I had an encounter, it was two, and they looked very, very human. Um, I asked them who they were. This is all through telepathy they said they were travelers and i said where are you from and they said from a star system that was on the opposite side of our galaxy they didn't want to give me any names or anything like that they were quite smug and uh, of course i was fearful and uh, basically it was they were interested they saw the light and they came in just to see what they could see but no features were revealed because they still had, you know, uh, helmets on and, um, you know, spacesuits and such. But it was a very, very quick encounter. It could have been nanoseconds. It was that quick, and it was all telepathy. That was fine. But <laughs> the next one, which came after, you know, a few decades, uh, was was pretty scary. So you're right about, you know, be careful what you wish for because the forms that they come in are not always pleasing to the eye. Um, uh, Some of them definitely are hybrids, but some of them are reptilian. Uh, They can take the forms of praying mantises or, you know, almost um, insect-looking heads, that type of thing with beady eyes. I mean, the grays are fairly basic with the black eyes and, 
you know, the huge heads and the small bodies, but, you know, there there are many forms. And, um, you know, we do have to be careful what we wish for. For sure, for sure. We are talking with Patricia Hutchinson tonight on Space Out Radio. Her website, readingsbypatricia.com. If you want to connect with her on a spiritual level and maybe get a reading, you could do that just by clicking on her website. Once again, it is readingsbypatricia.com. We are going to hook, hop out for our final break of the night. When we come back, more of your questions. Poet, we're starting with you. You're listening to Space Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott. We'll be right back. Want to find out what's coming up on the Spaced Out Radio Network? Go to spacedoutradio.com where you can find our daily list of shows and guests appearing throughout the week. Want to tell us your story? Be sure to sign up for the Spaced Out Forum for free. Maybe you have a psychic question. Drop in and say hi to Catherine in Cat's Corner. Spacedoutradio.com, your 24-hour source for UFOs, ghosts, conspiracies, and more. Check it out today. Are you one of many who's had a UFO or ET experience? Listen up. The AZ UFO Show is on every Sunday night at 7 on the Spaced Out Radio Network. We talk about UFO sightings across the globe, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, and more with me, Rich Giordano. I want you to know what's going on in the skies above you, so tune in to the AZ UFO Show on Spaced Out Radio Network on spacedoutradio.com right before Spaced Out Weekend. Our show is literally out of this world. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Brand new discovery beats NASA. This is Patrick Webster Small bringing you the Webster Phenomena every Monday night at 8 p.m. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to talk about amazing stuff. Have amazing guests. That's all that is, man. You know the rest as ETs up in the sky. I'm going to tell you which way and why. And we're going to have a little combo about these ETs in the sky. We're going to chill. This is Patrick Webster Small, and I'll be seeing you every Monday night at 8 p.m. Pacific Time. Write it down on Spaced Out Radio. Is the 24-hour world starting to wear you down? Let me, from Rivulet Reiki and Ratings, lend you a hand. Hi, this is Jolene. And if you're in need of Reiki or a realm rating, come to my website. RivuletRR.wix.com forward slash Rivulet R and R and let us help you out. At Rivulet, I specialize in healing your body, mind, and soul, no matter where you are. And be sure to check out the Rivulet R and R Facebook page for your best deal. Remember, it's time for you to make some time for you. Hi there, this is Jim Tyson, host of Spaced Out Weekend. When you've had a busy week and you're just wanting to chill out and relax, how about listening into my show? That's right, Spaced Out Weekend. I focus on the paranormal, the arcane. I even dip into the techie side of things and much, much more. And I would love for you to come in and check it out. Remember, Spaced Out Radio goes seven days a week. Dave Scott, Monday through Friday, and me, Jim Tyson, rolling through the weekends. I look forward to having you stop by for a listen every Saturday and Sunday night, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific, only on Spaced Out Radio. Miss most of tonight's show? Don't worry, you didn't miss a thing. You can head to our website, where you can download the podcast at spacedoutradio.com. Now, back to tonight's show. Here's Dave Scott. 
Welcome back to the final half hour of Space Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for tuning in as we are having a great show with our guest tonight, Patricia Hutchinson, her website, readingsbypatricia.com, if you want to check it out. Hey, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at Space Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like, Space Out Radio Show, along with our new groups, Podcast Central and Space Out Radio. If you're on Instagram, you can follow me at Dave Scott S O R. And of course, you can also join our new YouTube channel. Subscribe to it, Space Out Radio Show. All of our previous programming will eventually be put on there directly. I am out for the weekend as Uncle Jimbo James Tyson is in for Space Out Weekend, Saturday and Sunday night. Tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern. He kicks things off. And I will be wandering around the wilderness for the next 48 hours before I'm back in the hot seat Monday night talking Bigfoot with Shannon Legro from Into the Fray. Tonight we bring in Patricia Hutchinson for the final time as we are going to your phone calls tonight to find out how we can connect with our psychic selves and possibly extraterrestrials. We are going to go straight to the phone lines here, Patricia, as we got a bunch of callers who want to get in here. And considering we're running out of time, only half an hour left, I want to make sure that we do. Thank you so much for being with us again tonight, Patricia. Oh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> All right. We are going to one of this show's supporters, the lady from purpleplates.com, Corrine DeWinter. Corrine, how are you? I'm okay, Dave. How are you? I am fantastic. You know you always got a home here. And you know what? I do have to mention, <laughs> uh, you know what, Corrine? I do have to mention this before I I'll get you to ask your question to Patricia. Everyone in Paranormal Into the Night, I suggest you join this forum uh, group on Facebook because they are big fans of Purple Plates. Oh. And Every time I mention your commercial on the air, they always bring it up at how wonderful purple plates are. So you got to join Paranormal Into the Night because of that, because they're big supporters of yours. Oh, wow. Thank you. I will. Indeed. All right. All right. Um, you have a question for Patricia. For ha- I do. Hi, Patricia. Thanks Hi for there. being I love on that tonight. sound of purple plates. It sounds otherworldly. <laughs> It is. Oh, mm-hmm. Patricia, I must send you one. I must send you one. You bet. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so I know you have other callers, so I won't keep you that long. I just wanted to know what you sense around me, perhaps, in terms of maybe uh, spirit guides or whatever you'd like to term them. Spirit guides, okay. Um Well, uh, the the thing is about this type of um, this type of thing is that it really requires me to tune in quite a bit, and and it becomes almost a psychic reading, you know. Um, I can okay. tell you that <clears throat> no, I can just tell you briefly that I do feel that you work with a number of healers, and I feel that you have First Nation elders that are around you that are. Um, channeling you in some way with what you do i'm not sure what the purple plates are but i would imagine something to do with healing or well-being yes yes you have first nations elders that are working and channeling you so i don't know if that resonates with you but you also have um you know a good number of of other guides that uh, are very happy that you're doing what you're doing because I feel, uh, I, you know, quite a bit of strength around you. Thank you, Patricia. I feel that way. I feel like I am here to do this work, mm-hmm. and um, I'm honored uh, to be able to. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that's cool. Um, what I and, can tell you. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. What I can tell you is that you. I I feel that you have had lifetimes where, you know, you were a wise woman, maybe back in the 1200s, and you were working with some type of healing modality, but you probably, you know, were punished for it or killed for it or whatever. And in this lifetime, not to say that you haven't had lifetimes before that, you may have had 
many, several lifetimes between that time and this time, but in this lifetime you're doing it with impunity. There, there, nobody's telling you, oh, no, you can't do that, or no, this is, this is a threat to the system or anything. So you're in the right, uh, 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 you know, a path. You're in the right uh, thing that, that you're doing. Your, your practice is, is spot on because a lot of people... You work with energy, do you? Yes. Okay. So you're helping people because a lot of people right now are being depleted of energy. A lot of things that are going on in the earth are taking our attention because they're negative or morbid or wars are, you know, raging somewhere or, you know, we've got mortgages to pay and, you know, you've got to work harder and you've got to produce more and, and a lot of people are being ground up and spit out. So you're replenishing them with energy. So what you're doing is of the highest order. So I would suggest to you to keep doing what you're doing. I have a feeling that you're going to expand your practice and you're going to take on something in addition to what you're doing currently. So either a device or some other uh, modality that is going to help people. Yeah, and exactly. Thank you so much, Patricia, because you just totally solidified everything that I've been feeling and what I've been, you know, you know, told actually by other mediums and mm-hmm. psychics. So, yeah. Well, you're um, being I really helped. Appreci- You've got a lot of energies around you that are helping you. And um, mm-hmm. also I'm seeing that the money will manifest for you, so don't worry about it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you're there welcome. You go. Kareen, thank you so yeah. much. Thank the you, purple Kareen. Plate it's lady. a pleasure. Absolutely. I'll get your address, I Patricia, and I will send you a plate so you can oh, experience the Oh, that's very sweet mirror. of you. I'll give it to Dave and then, uh, oh, that'll be awesome. Yes, For sure. definitely. Okay, thank you, guys. Okay, God bless. Thank you. Yeah, she is an amazing, amazing person, and it, it, it's been the last few months where she's been really tapping into her own personal psychic ability and she's uh, growing so rapidly with it. I can't say, you know, how much I really think about her because she's a really good friend of this show and a good friend of mine. And, and, uh, you know what? I, I think you nailed it perfectly for Kareen there. We're going to go to Joey here on, uh, the next call and, uh, Joey's out of New York. Uh, be careful because he is a New York Mets fan. So Joey, you're up. (laughs) Yes, yes, I am a New York, New York Mets fan. I'm very proud of it. Uh, <laughs> I also have a purple plate, and it works really good, just so everybody knows. Oh. Uh, so, yes, I do have a purple plate. So Wonderful. I just wanted to share, yeah, I wanted to share um, something with you. I, I, I'm an empath, uh, and I opened up my mind to, you know, the paranormal and the supernatural and, and special gift last year mm-hmm. to actually find out that I was an empath. You know, it, it actually is, it, it's a great feeling, and I'm actually utilizing the tools that I have now uh, to do awesome things, you know, for people, you know, and so on yeah. and so forth. So I just, I, I, I wanted to share that, being that we were talking about opening opening ourselves up, you know, mm-hmm. per the se. chakras, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. Well, the uh, chakras are the light centers, and, you know, when we open, we, we can receive more readily than if we're just, you know, hunkered down and closed and, you know, from fear. So, you know, you can gain a lot of momentum by meditation and opening up the chakras and by the same token, you know, closing them off to protect yourself. Mm-hmm. And I have been doing that, too. I actually learned how to do that. <laughs> I, I learned how to close off the chakras so I don't bring the feelings into my body, which Absolutely. is all, you know, yeah, I, I learned how to do that through the whole year. So I, oh, now that's I'm, awesome. Yeah, yeah, so I, I'm just, uh, you know, helping people with my gift now. So mm-hmm. um, I just wanted to share that. That's all. So. Now, you have a grandfather in spirit with you. Yes, that's probably my grandfather, Joseph. Yes, he's, Very, uh, very strong energy. Yeah. He's very proud of you. Yeah, well, I never met him in life. So, well, it doesn't matter, you know, they know and see all. So, yeah. you know, even though you were you named after him or is there a middle name or namesake or I was I was named after him. 
Yeah, yeah well, because he's telling me a namesake, so this is why I'm telling you that. Okay. He's very proud of you, and uh, he wants you to continue doing what you're doing. Awesome. Thank you very much for that message. I appreciate it. Okay, God that. bless. God bless now. Thanks, Dave. Take care. No problem, Joey. My my Yankees are gonna beat the hell out of your Mets this year. I'm gonna tell you that right now. So oh, I don't know, yeah. I don't know about that, Dave. I don't no, know about not not. But the bet is back on. I gotta be on hold. The bet is back on, and uh, the bet usually is uh, we have to uh, publicly announce that we support one another's team at the end of the year. <laughs> if whoever's team finishes better. So it's a lot of fun. All right, we're going to go to Gene here. Gene has an extraterrestrial question for you. Hi, Patricia. Uh, hi, Dave. Hi, there. I'm enjoying, hi, Gene. I'm enjoying, the show. I'm enjoying the show tonight. Oh, good. Um, Patricia, my question is, um, since you uh, do uh, communicate with these beings telepathically, how could we then uh, interface with their subconscious or their higher consciousness? How could we interface with uh, them that way? And also, uh, what would be the best best method that you could suggest with merging, with humans merging with their alien technology? Mm -hmm. so you know, there's more of this going on right now because of the state of the earth. You know, global warming, wars, uh, people not living in integrity, all the above. They're, they're actually more around than we know. We just can't see them because they're able to exceed the speed of light and sound. Um, with respect to the question about interface, you don't have to do any of that. Nothing is staged. It's all very, very natural. It's almost like when you're around, they know. They know every cue. They know, know every move. So it's nothing is forced or engineered. So how how does communication take place with these beings? Well, it is telepathic because I've, ne I've never known them to, to have a conversation except through telepathy. And so how could we then interact with their subconscious? I don't know about subconscious, but... As far as I know, it's 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 through the conscious that we we communicate with them. Okay, uh, if, although the subconscious is more powerful. Uh, and Patricia, how would you suggest a person, sorry, a person psychically merge with alien technology? Uh, psychically merge? Uh, you mean find out what makes? What makes them superior technologically? No, just to just to merge with their technology. I'm not sure I understand the question. Okay. I know okay. the hour is late, but what do you mean, like, for us to understand their technology? To become, yes, to become one with it. Like, to become? Uh, to, to merge into it. I Does don't that, think I understand, a, because I'll tell you okay. something. Uh, from everything I know, it's almost like they don't want us to understand their technology. It's too far beyond us. It's it's, it's uh, too far it, it, beyond it, us, you know, and maybe we don't have like the facility. That, it may seem like that, but since everything is connected, then we would have a connectivity to that. And I just wanted to see what you thought, uh, Patricia. Yeah. Um, you know, the question is kind of profound, and I don't have the answer for it, um, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I can't. I can't answer it. I just. I. I'm stumped. I don't well, know how to answer that question. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your honesty. No, I'm not. Uh, I, I. I don't want to hedge a bet or anything like that, or uh, try to force it. But what I'm getting is, um, I'm. I'm drawing a blank on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm wondering if. Um, we're supposed to merge with their technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I think maybe that's the more important question: is is that our place to merge yes. with their technology? As they interact with us, we should then yeah interact with them back. But we and are they. through thought, you know, thought can, uh, you know, through techno to uh, what do you call it uh, telepathy. Yeah, but even just in their presence, you can't help to. Uh, 
uh, uh, merge with them. It's like a, it's the whole thing is about merging and blending together. When we communicate telepathically, that's a, a mental merging, and there's a way it can be done physically too. Uh, to mentally but, uh, merge with their uh, telepathy. With their telepathy and their consciousness, yeah. That's an it's an interesting field of study. But, uh, um, yeah, I don't want to take up all the time. I can only tell. Just... Yeah, I can only tell you what I what I get from that. When you communicate with them, you are so overwhelmed. Your mind doesn't even go into the whys and wherefores. You're in awe. You're awestruck. I think because of their advanced intelligence, you're in awe. And uh, sorry, Jean, I had to uh, put you back on hold because I have a bunch of callers that are still waiting to hop on the line here. And but thank you so much for for calling in, Pat- Patricia. We're going to move on on the phone lines here. We got an eight four three area code, and we're going to okay. go to that phone caller right now. Caller from eight four three area code. How are you doing? Oh, hey, thanks so much. This is Amy, and um, my my question's pale, so it's... Amy, I think we're losing you here. Yeah, it just cut off. It did. Amy, try giving us a call right back, okay? Okay, perfect. Uh, All right, let's go to... uh, to the lovely Christine, Daryl, Iris, whoever she is tonight. Uh, li- she is out of New York as well and one of our great listeners. How are you, Daryl? Hey there. How's everybody? Good. You got your sound down tonight. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I have we're only going to have time for about... Uh, what? Hey, Daryl, we're only going to have time for about one question for you, my dear, tonight. All right. Let me just ask her about other dimensions since... Um, that's my main focus, I suppose. Um, how does she... Do, okay, as we start getting, let's say, more open consciously and we start to see other dimensions, are other dimensions starting to see us? That's or a good are, question. Are they always, like, more... They've always more, been there. It's just, a, you know, it's it's a matter of awareness. Yeah. And it's a matter of broadening our scope uh-huh. and uh, maybe uh, opening up our our minds and hearts and uh, realizing we are connected. Yeah. It's all part of a greater picture, the greater good. Right. Um, and that, you know, in this universe there are, you know, multiple dimensions. And, right. uh, I mean, we can't just confine ourselves to time and space because they're certainly not in the time and space consciousness. So um, yeah. otherwise they couldn't reach the Earth in a timely manner. I mean, well, I, time, wonder, I wonder if, like, Earth alone has enough beings, spirits, elves, wolves, whatever. Um, absolutely. Yeah, like we have so many. Like, absolutely. Like billions of, of something. Absolutely. You know. No doubt. All you need to do is take your camera out, and, you know, to any forest or any, you know, vortex or any special place and start clicking away and you'll see the orbs, you'll see little shafts of light, you'll see spots of green, like re- almost, you know, neon. I mean, where does that come from? That's spirit energy. Right, right. Well, so, I, see a lot, <clears throat> I see a lot worse than that. I see a lot of monsters and I see a lot of... Um, very strange things. I I see people. Some some are not scary, but some are. Mm-hmm. And like Dave, I'm also afraid of those aliens that find us delicious. Right, right, right. Um, you know, would it be meals? But um, yeah, I have some very unusual pictures tonight. I have a picture of a boat passing through the Statue of Liberty. Oh yeah. That 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 just turned into two boats. I'm sure there's a very scientific, you know, explanation for what that was. Right. But then it came back together as one boat, but it was one of those, like, out-of-the-dimension type of, you know, into one dimension. I don't know. 
Mm-hmm. But it was a great shot. I hope it came out okay. Yeah, that would be interesting to see. You know, but there's some very, but there's some battles happening. Do you know anything about battles between? Absolutely. Spirits? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of spiritual warfare going on that we can't see, but we can sense it. And I think this is why a lot of people right now are not doing very well. A lot of people are checking out. A lot of people are not coping. A lot of people are having issues with uh, the need for drugs like heroin and other substances because they use that to mask pain. And it's from, you know, a a feeling of dis-ease and the feeling that, you know, things aren't right. There's something not right that's going on. Um, and, And so it all comes into play. I I think um, there definitely is uh, some spiritual warfare going on, uh, you know, the dark energies Mm -hmm. and the light energies. And, you know, we have to decide what, which spectrum we're connected to. We either serve the light or serve the dark. And, you know, that's a conscious decision and a choice. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I happen to serve the light realms and I connect with the light realms. So, you know... Uh, you know, my messages are all geared to the light. So I can only speak for that, but I realize that there are a lot of people that are dabbling with other forces, and it's not helping what's going on in the earth because, um, you know, we're going through some dark days right now. We have to keep as whole and, and, you know, we have to keep our candles lit, if you will, our lamps, um, you know, alight because, you know, we are... We are living in very difficult days. You know, just look around. For sure. You For know, sure. The economy's crashing and fear and a lot of fear mongering. We have to keep positive and have faith because just as there are negative energies, there are twice as many light energies there to help us, to help plump us up and, and buffer us and keep us safe. We are talking with Patricia Hutchinson tonight on Space Out Radio. Readings by Patricia is her website. Patricia, we have time for one more call. We're going to bring Amy back on. And thank you, Daryl, for the phone call earlier on, but I did want to get Amy's call in. Amy, thank you so much for calling back and joining the show. You're on with Patricia. You had a question. Oh, yes, yes, and hopefully you can hear me this time. Anyway, um, I am, I'm like in the middle of this road trip, and I got some very disturbing news. And the new I don't want to go into all the details, but you know, but for some reason the news like it didn't bo- it didn't bother me, and I sense that everything is going to be okay. And I just sort of wanted you to do a quick reading to make sure that I'm not just um, pouring pink um, pink sugar cotton candy all over this. Um, you'd have to tell me, is this a personal matter? Does it pertain to a family member or what, what's no, going on? No, job, job, job. A Apparently job situation. Our division was, uh, it was just, I found out that it has to, it has to do with my um, employment. And I did some fact-finding and um, some intuitive stuff. We're having a meeting at 9 o'clock, but um, I used my um sl- my snooping to uh, and figured out that um that um we're being downsized mm-hmm. and um i'm ju- but i feel okay about and i'm just you know i just wanted you to sort of do a quick um energy read on the whole situation am i deluding myself you know am i just um um cuz i do you know i i try to like I've gotten to the point where I don't care if news is good news or bad news. I just want it to be true news, and I just want to make sure I'm being true. You know, I'm one one second one second here, Amy. Uh, P- Patricia, I know this hasn't been a psychic reading show. Do you want to uh, answer that question at this time? Do you feel that you have the energy to do so? Well, it's kind of the end of the night <laughs> type thing, so I don't know if I can really be of that much help, but. Um... I can only tell you that it feels like um, there was an edict or uh, a message uh, that trickled down from, you know, senior management, um, and it is downsizing, and it pertains to the bottom line. And 
jobs are going to be um, cut back or, you know, sliced down or there's going to be a reshuffling. And, and I feel uneasy about it. So it doesn't feel like it's great news, but, um, you know, there might be there might be a solution to it. There could be, you know, offering you a different position or, or I just feel that there's going to be a restructuring and it's due to, um, you know, shortfalls in the money. So <clears throat> I, I think I would prepare for the worst and hope for the best, but it, it feels like um, it's a fairly serious matter. That's what I'm sensing. Right. And it's I want to thank all other people. And I want to thank all of our callers tonight. And, uh, Amy, I'm uh, sorry I had to cut you off. We were just running straight out of time. We only got about two minutes left with Patricia. Patricia, I, I want to say thank you because uh, our responses from our chat rooms that we have running, Space Out Radio's chat room, Paranormal Into the Night, Paranormal Forum, very active with you tonight in regards to it. And that's always a good sign when we have that's someone great. on who, who uh, commands a lot of activity in the chat room. So, I want to say thank you for that, and I'd love it if you uh, take, you know, take a minute or two uh, to just explain your website, what people can find on there, and how they can get a hold of you in regards to readings. Sure. Well, um, I do readings. Um, if, if somebody needs a, a telephone reading, I, I provide telephone readings. If they want to see me, they can um, contact me through the website. The website has a bio. It's got a picture. I mean, it's, it's, I, I look older than that picture, by the way. But anyways, um, it, it it is a likeness anyway. But um, it does have a bunch of testimonials where, you know, viewers can check them out. I mean, none of them have been solicited. They've all been, um, you know, provided voluntarily. So I am legit. But um, I think that's... Uh, that's pretty much what it what it gives you. It just gives you a way to contact me through the website, and if they'd like to make, um, you know, an appointment or inquiries, they can do so through there. Perfect, perfect. And and you know, um, I do want to say when we start out the start off this space travelers mm-hmm. membership here on Space Out Radio, Patricia has agreed mm-hmm. as one of the monthly gifts that we are going to give back to you. In that, and I'll give you more details on that as time goes on here, our Space Out Radio friends. But she has agreed that she will give a one half hour reading to one person for uh, one of the draws that we are going to do. So, Patricia, I want to say thank you for hopping on board and helping us grow with a great little gift like that. I do appreciate that. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, it's, Absol- it's been very, very nice on the show. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. You know, it's we try our best. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> oh, goodness, it's past yeah, mine, no, too. but it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Patricia Hutchinson, oh. thank you so much for being on Space oh, Out pleasure. Radio tonight. Yeah, it was an you. absolute pleasure, and we'll talk yeah, to you very okay. soon. Okay, thanks again, Dave, and I'll give you the address and such when Perfect. you call. Thanks I will. Again. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Do you have a topic or guest you'd like to hear on Spaced Out Radio? Email us, dave at spacedoutradio.com. Send us a quick message on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio or a message on our Facebook page, Spaced Out Radio. Once again, here's Dave Scott. I am craving a hamburger or something bad. I'm telling you right now, dieting sucks. But I'm looking pretty. At least that's what... I said to myself in the mirror, hey, I want to say thanks once again to Patricia Hutchinson for joining us on Space Out Radio tonight, readingsbypatricia.com. I am out for the weekend. I'm going to wander aimlessly through the forests of British Columbia here, trying to find my own zen. Uncle Jimbo James Tyson is back in the hot seat the next two nights with Space Out Weekend. I will be back on Monday night where my guest will be into the phrase, Shannon Legro. We're talking Bigfoot. And we're going to get into it tomorrow on Monday night. 
Hey, remember, you can follow us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. You can give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. You can also ask to join our private Spaced Out Radio group, as well as our other group, Podcast Central. On Instagram, I could be followed at Dave Scott, S-O-R. And, of course, our new YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show. We're going to be adding shows there as we move along here, because we're preparing the big move. Yes, leaving Blog Talk Radio, going over to Spreaker. We're hopefully going to be running some test shows here within the next few days to see how it sounds. So bear with the news. Much love to all of you listeners in the Space Out Radio chat room, Paranormal Into the Night, and Paranormal Forum. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. You make this show so much better. You're helping us grow, and that's where we want to go. Higher. Be a part of it. Thank you so much. We appreciate the love. Don't forget James Tyson in the hot seat tomorrow night. Good night.